I'm here just on the outside of the Darren Sami International Cricket Ground here in St. Lucia. And you can see it's a lot of sunny conditions. And according to the natives, there were a lot of similar conditions leading up to today. And down the road ahead for this leg of matches, which is going to be running from September 7th to the 11th, a lot more sun can be expected, which is vastly different from what we have encountered in St. Kitts, where Ray would have affected many of the matches. Now, after that first leg in St. Kitts, there are only two unbeaten sides. Those are Jamaica Talawas, who have a better net run rate uh, than the Barbados Royals. The top of the table, the Royals are in second. Shinobago Knight Riders, the formidable Shinobago Knight Riders, are in third position. Uh, the defending champions, St. Kitts and Evans Patriots, are in fourth. And the Guyana Amazon Warriors have one point after the two matches. They have lost to the Talawas in the opening encounter, and then their second match against the Patriots would have been uh, wiped out by rain. And the winless and Lucia Kings are in sixth position. Now, to get things off rolling in St. Lucia, it's going to be two big clashes. It's going to be the Barbados Royals against the formidable Chinbago Knight Riders on September 7th from 10 hours. And then the hosts are going to be playing the unbeaten Talawas. And the Amazon Warriors then swing into action from September 8th against the Patriots. And then they play the host on September 10th. Those are the Amazon Warriors two matches here in St. Lucia. And then they head off to Trinidad and Tobago to play two more matches before they head home for four consecutive Whole matches. Now, according to the statisticians, it's important the Warriors get at least two wins here. Uh, ideally, they would need three wins over the leg. So, if they can get maybe one here and two in Trinidad, it would put them in a better position when they head home to play four whole matches. Uh, in the past, uh, six wins, which would give you 12 points, would be good enough to get you into the playoffs. But thus far this season, signs are showing that it could be very close at the back end of the tournament. Now, for the Amazon Warriors, that one match you would have played, remember the match against the Patriots would have been washed out, not a ball bowl. Against the Talawas, it wasn't so convincing. Uh, the bowling really leaked runs in the match they had in the bag until the final three overs, and the batting didn't give them the best of starts. The conditions here in St. Lucia in the previous years have been very conducive to high scoring matches, and a lot of time it brings in the paces into contention. Now, it begs the question. Could Romayo Shepard bounce back? Could Kimo Paul find some good form? And maybe there's going to be some changes to allow the likes of Ronsford Beaton to break in. Uh, Odin Smith has been in good international form. So certainly, he's going to be a key player on these kind of wickets. For sure, the Amazon Warriors are a sprint trio of Gurikish Moti, Tiberi Shamsi, and Imran Tahir are going to be uh, key guys on this kind of surface. With Paul Sterling and Chandra Paul Hermach, hopefully this time getting off to a good start, it should set the foundation for the likes of Sherman Hetmeyer, we would have seen in the recent match that is good enough to get some big hitting from Romario Shepard. Hetmeyer was not his fluent best, but he managed to spend some time in the middle with a partnership with Shea Hope. But for the Amazon Warriors, uh, time is running out. I know it's just an early start to the tournament, but given how competitive many of these sides look, they need wins at this point in time. Reporting from the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground in St. Lucia, and Mark in Green. Now we play. This is how we play. This is how we play. How we play. Yeah. How you play.